we were not meant to explore the stars in his book pale blue dot cosmologist carl sagan explains that for thousands of years humans have believed themselves to be special every society every civilization believes themselves to be the special children of god created in his image to be better than all other creatures on earth this is wrong of course and as sagan explains one of the reasons science is so terrifying to people who believe such things is because it shows us just how unimportant we are as a species we are merely a product of luck and evolution nothing more but while that is true scientifically speaking it fails to take into account our progress as a species in the span of just 10000 years we have gone from a minor footnote on the earth's biosphere to the undisputed masters of our planet for better or worse we have conquered every last corner of our pale blue dot and the only frontier that remains is the one above us for as ill equipped as we are to go there the fact remains that for humanity space is the obvious next step ever since humans figured out that the bright little circles in their telescopes were planets and suns just like ours we've wanted to go there and see what it's like You can't tell me you've never wondered what it would be like to walk on one of Jupiter's planet-sized moons or to slip past the event horizon of a black hole. Space is extraordinarily vast and mysterious, and we only barely started exploring it 60 years ago. In the span of a single human lifetime, we've discovered supernovas, calculated the age of the universe, and landed SUV-sized rovers on Mars. We've also learned that there is much much more to the worlds beyond our own than we could ever have anticipated. One of my favorite sequences in 2001 A Space Odyssey is when David Bowman, the protagonist, passes close to Jupiter aboard the Discovery. When Bowman used the highest magnification of Discovery's telescopes, he appeared to be hanging above a slightly flattened globe. looking down upon a vista of racing clouds that had been smeared into bands by the giant world's swift rotation sometimes those bands congealed into wisps and knots and continent-sized masses of colored vapor sometimes they were linked by transient bridges thousands of miles in length hidden beneath those clouds was enough material to outweigh all the other planets in the solar system and what else bowman wondered was also hidden there truth be told we don't really know scientists have made educated guesses based on mathematical models and observations on earth the crushing pressure deep below the surface molds carbon to form brilliant diamonds scientists believe that jupiter's immense size and gravity can replicate these same conditions in the planet's very atmosphere in all likelihood it rains diamonds on jupiter Of course, there's no real way to verify this. No spacecraft could survive a journey more than a few kilometers into Jupiter's surface without being struck by lightning, destroyed by 400 miles per hour winds, or crushed by the immense atmospheric pressure. In shows like Star Trek or games like Mass Effect, humans have colonized vast regions of space spanning galaxies. In reality, we may never even know what the fifth planet in our solar system looks like under the surface. which is kind of scary to think about back on earth we've managed to basically terraform the planet to suit our own requirements we're drunk on power from being able to control the forces of nature to do our bidding and it's only now beginning to dawn on us humans that in the grand scheme of things we're big fish in a very very small pond sitting on a tiny island in the middle of an ocean larger than our imaginations can comprehend in any meaningful way It's not that I don't enjoy space operas like Star Wars or Interstellar. Space movies are exciting because they bring back the mystery and wonder of exploring the unknown at a time in human history when there's not that much left to explore back home. There's a palpable sense of adventure in sailing uncharted waters, especially if you consider the possibility of alien civilizations colliding with ours. But a common theme across these space adventures is that they breathe new life into existing genres or themes. Cowboy Bebop is an anime set in space, but with the trappings of a western and the moody sensibilities of a noir thriller. The recently released indie narrative RPG Citizen Sleeper tells the story of an escaped slave laborer who must survive on a lawless space station while fighting the capitalist powers that control human colonies in space. 
These are all stories that have been told before in many different forms. I wouldn't go so far as to call these recycled stories with a new coat of paint, but they do feel familiar, deeply rooted in human conflicts and politics that have been a part of society for centuries. Sure, you watch Star Trek for the cool futuristic technologies and weird planets filled with alien civilizations, but the real draw of these films is how they use these things as props to tell the stories of people fighting for freedom against tyrannical regimes and the balance between forces of good and evil. These movies use space as a canvas for telling their stories rather than featuring it as a main character, which is fine, but it got me to wondering what about stories where space plays a more central role, where vital considerations of plot and character centers around the idea that we are no longer on Earth? Recently, I started reading this short story collection, The Fifth Science, by the YouTuber Exerbia. Most of the stories in this book are set in the same universe, but they all feature different characters, storylines, and concepts. In fact, pretty much every story is set in a different time period in that universe, with new technological advancements and evolving interstellar colonies. In these stories, humanity has long since outgrown the Earth and have spread to planets and alien worlds light years apart. In order to govern themselves, they've formed a cosmic empire that spans the entire galaxy. And while the seat of imperial power rests on Earth, Interstellar colonies have started spreading and growing at an exponential pace to the point where no single governing body can control the entire thing. Instead, the various colonies and planets are pretty self-sufficient and only owe a loose allegiance to the Imperial headquarters back home. But the most fascinating thing about this world is how the very nature and immensity of space affects every aspect of daily life, politics and cultural evolution. If you've read about astronomy or cosmology, then you have an idea of how dauntingly gargantuan space is. Our minds literally cannot wrap themselves around the sheer size of it because it kind of just doesn't make sense. For humans to just reach the sun, it would take over 220 days in a spacecraft. But to reach Neptune, a planet that's well within the solar system, that same spacecraft would take more than 18 years. What about the closest star to the Sun, Alpha Centauri? That would take even the fastest spacecraft ever made 18,000 years to get there. Even if humans were to colonize the galaxy, how would we even communicate across trillions and trillions of kilometers of empty, desolate space? In stories like Guardians of the Galaxy or Star Trek, such considerations are conveniently swept under the rug with fanciful technologies like warp speed. Space is nothing more than a series of interconnected planets and space stations for you to fast travel between. The fifth science, however, explores the idea of a space empire with no such easy workaround. Instead, colonies are so far apart as to become completely cut off from one another for years or even centuries, developing their own wholly unique cultures, technologies and politics. One planet has discovered that consciousness isn't something that emerges from complex brain matter but is actually a property of matter and space-time, leading them to create a giant particle accelerator to synthesize artificial consciousness. Meanwhile, another planet much farther away and in a different timeline has developed AI so advanced as to supersede their human creators in their search for the universe's greatest mysteries. Except, the other colonies don't hear of any of this for years at a time because communication signals need to travel the light years of space in between. In this universe, traveling between colonies is a life-altering affair because even with near light speed travel, reaching the various corners of the galactic empire would take centuries. At those timescales, a human would need to be cryogenically preserved to survive the journey and when they reach their destination, they would wake up to a very different world than the one they left. Not only would they have outlived all of their loved ones, but they'd essentially time-travelled into a completely unfamiliar future. In these stories, the universe brims with mysterious natural phenomena, incomprehensible subcultures forming within distant planetary worlds, and the tenuous thread connecting them is the empty light years of cosmos that lie between them. Space is like an ocean on which these worlds fight to stay afloat, even as shadowy cosmic oddities lie hidden in the murky depths. Things one must know about, but only so you can avoid them. Taken together, the stories in the fifth science induce a sort of 
quiet cosmic horror, the sense of anxious smallness and insignificance. They don't mean to be scary or even serve as a warning for what's to come. Instead, they try to interpret the strange and daunting unknowables that humans would likely encounter as we drifted from the comfort of our home planet. It's a very evocative style of storytelling, not in the sense of plot or characters, but in a sense of place. These worlds, for as surreal and absurd as they seem, feel like they belong in their universe, almost like an MC Escher illusion. It doesn't look right, it shouldn't exist, but it draws you in for whatever reason. The works of French artist Mobius make me feel the same way. Many of his artworks feature otherworldly landscapes, improbable futuristic structures, and a curious intersection of alien technology with human civilization. Some of them feel peaceful and pleasant to look at, while others give off a sense of foreboding. Most of these illustrations ignore questions of practicality or realism and don't offer an explanation as to why these worlds are the way they are. They just exist and invite you to marvel at these enigmatic alien worlds that, in all likelihood, may never come to pass, but are fun to imagine just for the sake of it. I'm usually not the biggest fan of stories that intentionally leave a lot of concepts or ideas unexplained, but in the case of stories set in the far reaches of space, I think it makes sense. We don't really know what lies out there, at least not for certain. Limiting our stories to what we're familiar with feels like a lost opportunity, when we can be creating stories around the unknown, the unexplainable, the deeply mysterious. Humans are curious creatures, and even the things that spark fear in us give rise to an equally strong desire to know and to understand. We like to dig deep, shine a light into the dark places of the world, and answer questions that we had no reason to even ask. Call it hubris, call it foolish ambition, but this is what we do. It's our entire purpose for existing, and when it comes to space, we're just scratching the surface. As it stands today, we humans are at the precipice of something truly big, an era of human civilization that could potentially transcend its terrestrial borders. We're still figuring things out, of course, much like the first humans to ever see the ocean must have done hundreds of thousands of years ago. Launching a canoe here, a sailboat there, it may be a good while before we understand how to properly build a craft capable of taking on the rough waters or figure out what we'll even do when we reach that new world. There's much the universe has to teach us even before we set out to explore it. And who knows what will happen once we cross that threshold. All I can say for certain is, whatever we think we can expect from that journey, we'll surely be wrong. Thanks for watching Next Level Narrative. If you enjoyed this video, a like and subscribe would really help out the channel. This is your host, Anish, and I'll see you next time.